This girl says one word at adoption hearing, judge stops it right after. A child single-handedly ended an adoption trial with one word, thereby thwarting a selfish woman's despicable scheme to use him as an avenue to get funding for her decadent lifestyle. Mike and Jane always wanted a child of their own, however, Jane, who had once endured an ectopic pregnancy she had to get rid of, was too fearful of going through the process again. The doctors had also told her that the best thing to do would be to avoid having a child as it could cause similar complications, which may invariably lead to her demise. Mike and Jane went to trial over their kid's adoption source, Shutterstock. After a lot of therapy and late-night discussions, the lovely couple decided to become foster parents. Jane's friend Sarah worked for child services, and she was one of those who encouraged Jane and her husband to become foster parents. Sarah helped them speed up the paperwork, and one month later, when a six-day-old named Jason ended up in foster care, she arranged for Mike and Jane to have him. Jason was the only child born to Sharon, a less fortunate woman with drug addiction. She gave out a lot of sexual favors just to get money to fuel her addiction, and she only had Jason because doctors had warned against another abortion after the couple she had already endured in the past. Sharon could not identify which men got her pregnant, and she did not care, the men would not accept responsibility for such a child anyways. She had surrendered Jason to child services in a rare moment of maternal trance. At least you'll get adopted by a great family and you'll be safe, she thought. Still, moments like that were fleeting, and Sharon always seemed to forget them in the throes of her desire for drugs and other sources of dopamine, like more men. However, once she gave him up, it was near impossible to get him back without cleaning up her act and showing child services that she was stable enough to raise a child. Once Sharon gave Jason up, it was near impossible to get him back without cleaning up her act. When Mike and Jane met Jason, they fell in love immediately. He was perfect, not only was he gorgeous, but he was also still a baby. As far as Jane was concerned, she could have given birth to him. They quickly filed the paperwork for his adoption, but there was a clause. The natural mother still held her parental rights over the child, which meant she could turn up for baby Jason at any time. Mike and Jane were disheartened by this, and they immediately wanted to know how to avoid such an occurrence. I'm sorry but unless his birth mom voluntarily gives him up for adoption, she will always have parental rights over him, Sarah told them. But I thought she did, Jane groaned. How did he come into the possession of child services anyways? When Mike and Jane met Jason, they fell in love immediately. Well technically, she left him outside the orphanage door with a name tag containing his details, should she appear in the future, she can always take her child back. The news dampened Mike and Jane's joy, but they were already in love with little Jason. They finished the paperwork and hastily rushed off to the store to get all the necessary supplies required to care for a six-day-old baby adequately. Then they picked him up and took him home to where they had repurposed their old study into a nursery. Mike and Jane were amazing parents. Some might even say they were born for the role. Where other parents may have gotten upset that they had to sleep lightly at night or often change diapers, the couple were enthused by it all. When Jason slept soundly through the night, the couple still roused themselves just to go watch him sleep. They enjoyed cleaning up their boy's mess, and even when he slept soundly through the night, they still roused themselves just to go watch him sleep. Their abode was brighter, more colorful as they sought to create a haven of satisfaction and visual pleasure for their new child. In the first few weeks, the two worried about Jason's mom coming for him, but when weeks turned to months and months to a year, they started to relax. Maybe she moved on, Mike hoped. However, Jane was more bothered. She loved the boy so much, she had nightmares of losing him to his birth mother, whom her gut told her would resurface. She eventually convinced her husband to hire a lawyer to help them adopt the child entirely. But it wasn't an easy process, and there was simply no way to circumvent the law that gave the natural mother a right to claim her child as long as he is still too young to decide where he wants to stay. Jane was so worried about Jason she had nightmares of losing him to his birth mother. They worked hard to find loopholes, but none were available, and even though child services assured them the birth mother would have to have means to match or beat their good parenting for her to be allowed to take the child, they feared he would be taken at any moment. Their fears were justified when one day, Sarah called to tell them that Sharon, the birth mother, had resurfaced and requested to have her child. Mike and Jane were devastated. Sarah also told them that Sharon seemed to have cleaned her life up, which meant losing little Jason to her was possible. He was two years old already. Mike and Jane battled Sharon's claims in court, but when they saw that things were not going their way, they started to say their goodbyes to their little boy. 
Mike and Jane were devastated when Sharon resurfaced and requested to have her child source, Pexels. Mike and Jane were devastated when Sharon resurfaced and requested to have her child. A month after the adoption trials began, they convened at the courthouse to hear the judge's final verdict. Jason's biological mom argued that she had changed and told the judge that she wanted her baby back with her. I'm a changed person and I just want to be able to care for my child and make a better life for him, she pleaded. In truth, she had a secret plan. She wanted to take the baby away from Mike and Jane so she could get financial support for the child and spend it on new drugs. The judge, a man named Kurt Wilson, was presiding. As he read the adoption decree, two-year-old Jason, who had been sleeping the whole time, opened his eyes, looked at Jane, and suddenly yelled Ma, Ma with his arms outstretched waiting to be carried. Jane promptly burst into tears. That moment changed the whole atmosphere. The judge heard everything he needed to know and motioned to stop the hearing immediately. However, Sharon went wild. Sphere helped the judge make his decision. How can I be sure he is my child, she yelled. She walked towards Jason, and when she made to carry him, he tried to get away, afraid of the unfamiliar face. That only infuriated Sharon more. She had not been able to get drugs for days, and it was getting to her. Her dealer had refused to see her, and now her baby was refusing to even look at her. She snapped. He is not my child. You changed him, she yelled and left the courtroom. After the drama died down, the judge awarded parental rights to Mike and Jane since it was apparent Sharon was no longer mentally stable enough to raise the child. That was what he told them. In truth, his decision was made as soon as he heard the child call Jane Mama. The couple lived happily ever after with their son Source, Unsplash. The couple lived happily ever after with their son Source, Unsplash. What did we learn from this story? Whatever will be will be. Mike and Jane were destined to be parents to Jason. They worried over the fate of their future with him, but in the end, everything worked in their favor, and Sharon's despicable scheme was thwarted. An addict cannot make a good parent. Mike and Jane succeeded as parents because they dedicated their time to the child. Sharon already had something taking up all her time and energy, which meant she would not have been able to spare any towards raising her child. All she had to do was give up her addiction to alcohol and drugs, but in the end, she could not, and it cost her a child.